Hi everyone, how you doing? So, my name is Rachel Gosha, and in today's video, we are doing a story time. I've not done this before, but I just figured why not? I mean, there's a first time for everything, and this is my first time. Now, I thought over very many stories that I would be telling you, and I, I just found this one that just kept making me laugh. I'm going to be taking you back to my primary school life. Of course, schools are very closed right now. Oh, also, also, also my primary school does not exist anymore. So I am one of those kids whose schools one time existed. One of the best schools in Barra, by the way, but it does not exist anymore now. <laughs> so I, I, I happen to be a village girl. I actually grew up in the village. And yeah, so before I moved to civilization, to urbanization, I think it's a village with my grandma. My grandma brought me up and the only language I could actually speak was over what? Luso, not Luso. My great grandmother used to speak that language. So at five years, I come to Mbara and my mom tells me we are going to school. Five years. So we go to this fancy school, which was one of the big schools in Mbara. It actually still is. It's actually an international school right now. Just that it does not have the primary section where I studied. So. We reached this school and uh, <laughs> we, we got to the administration block and they, they put, they, they of course give us chairs to sit. My mom does that. My mom was with the administrators and trying to get me into the school and everything as outside on the veranda. You know, veranda? Yeah, of the administration block form. So I'm sitting there. So everything happens and as I was actually so naive. I mean, I was five years old, five years old, yeah? My whole life, all of the life I'd known was village life and everything. So I'm here and I'm sitting on that form and waiting to see what happens next. So they finish everything and my mom leaves. So in my little brain, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to come and pick me eventually, yeah? So I decide to sleep. I sleep on this bench from whatever time it was i just i remember of course these things in bits and pieces because i was five honestly <laughs> so uh i remember sleeping up to around five or six i think because it was evening and everyone else was coming from class and i was on that little bench now i think i showed to the dormitory and everything now what happened was um like i said earlier i just knew one language i did not know what english was and as in ankole mbarara so you do not know Uganda, you do not know english you do not know runyankole and you are in a foreign land i mean foreign to what you have always known you do not know how to speak the english language either and you are in a school where speaking vernacular is a criminal offense <laughs> A lot of people call it a criminal offense because they use literally used to gain us for speaking vernacular and see how I turned out. So <laughs> there's this particular child, or what should I say, pupil student. You guys, I was bullied. I was bullied, I was bullied, but I think I just keep blocking the memories of the whole bad times but there's some things that I think just stand out and just keep coming back because yo, these were intense. So every Monday, um, there was a teacher. This particular teacher should come to our dormitories and ask, who has been speaking vernacular? And then there was this chick who used to say, Nancha! <laughs> I went by Nancha Rachel in my primary. Uh, so everyone, actually everyone who I went to primary school with calls me Nancha. Everyone will call you Nancha, 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 Nancha. Mm -hmm. So you know the first time this chick is like, Nancha, in my head I'm like, what? <laughs> So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, okay. I don't remember what I was thinking at that point, but I, I now feel like it was right that I, I became, I think I used to speak a language that so these guys just used not to understand. And, <laughs> and you know, you're talking to them, you're trying to communicate, but I mean, if you were speaking like Luganda or or something, like that, they would maybe understand, but what I was saying. You guys, in my little head, I knew this was torture because no, Okay, 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 I feel like no, 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 it was not fair. And you know, this lady would cane you. So she caned me the first time, and I'm like, okay. As if I was dreaming, as if it was not actually happening. So the next time, she used to come every Monday, I remember. So she comes back again on this other Monday. She's like, who has been speaking Banaka? She just 
stand like at the doorway who has been speaking vernacular and again it's like a kid nancha you guys twice like consecutively i'm like what they came to me for speaking vernacular in this school and in mind i'm like okay wow my primary life was not easy i must say there was a lot of learning as in boarding school at five like five years old and you're in boarding school so you literally and you are in in a new school new environment new everything you literally don't know how to find your way around things but you are there struggling mm? so i had to pick myself up because of course no one was going to do it for me i had to grow up and do everything like an independent person independent child that i really was i must say I, I think I, I picked up quite quickly. I think the fact that I only knew one language, it was very easy for me to learn. So it was easy for me to learn the new language because it was the next, like a viable language, I should say. So English kind of came, like I learned, I really, really learned a whole lot from, from, from my whole devastation, I think. I just knew I had no other option but to learn the language. So I was in one school all my life, primary. I was in the same school for all my seven years. I never got to change school. You know, we'd go back home in the holiday. And you know, you know how you're in a community and then there's this one particular school where everyone else wants to be and it is not your school because um, they have so much fun in that school than in your school. My school was the best school, I would say. You know, like how everyone would say their school was the best and everything. Mine was the best in the area. However, we were not doing all those fun things that every other child was doing in their school. Ngafeja Twina speech day, Manya sports day, what, what, what? We never had those things. All the time we were. So, younger, the only sports we do is maybe PE, and then you'd go in the playground. You know, those things that you do. Ate, removable dresses. Ate, what, what? <laughs> that's all we ever had speech day nothing Nga, we just study study the one time we had speech day i think we had only one speech day because it wasted so much money for the school okay i don't want to call it wasting i bet we used to pay so much money in my school was one of those schools that was paying much more money than every other school but i think uh the whole speech day thing because i remember we had nyama we had they slaughtered a whole cow then irish then um a, a lot of drinks for the like how a normal speech day should be basically so that was us and then i think it was so much time for us because we had a lot of training to do i think i was in top class because um i was in top blue i remember that song uh <laughs> um i don't know if i should sing my song here but you all are going to <laughs> i don't think you want to listen to that song but yeah so yeah if you want to listen to the song you can tell me i will sing for you in the next video before before we start the other video so yeah life went on life went on like like that like that my school was a bit boring i should say we didn't have those extracurricular activities really but i loved it there somehow it this is a particular prestige that it brought to me the fact that i was in that school and then would come back home and you're the only one speaking that fluent english and like yeah <laughs> but yeah like i said i stayed in my same school entirely now as time went on you know life would be so hard you guys primary school is hard and i think primary school of those days was harder than these current kids these kids aren't kids you know they i think i think in the current schools some some schools do not encourage children or their students or pupils from carrying um we used to call it grub i think we still do to school and everything you know so there, there's there's normally there's harmony like the children are living in harmony now those days eh? you would come with your cup bread and what and people would come with things boxes of what i tell what and they're like what's up so you see those, those kids don't carry don't carry so much grab like everyone is living in harmony but those days banange now you can look and be like why me like why what is happening i used not to carry a lot of things because over we didn't have time you know apeta apeta apeti depends on which school you went to those things now that was the funny part of school now in those days uh what i'm about to tell you used not to be funny like it used not to be funny at all it was very normal like we all were doing it and we're okay but now that i think about it i'm like wow what misery like how could we have been so miserable like this so you see how we used to carry people used to carry i never used to carry a peta a te 
chipoli or d at a what i never used to have those things but you see those kids who used to carry those things now you see when we grew up you used to put your appetite or give what in 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 a dish or on your plate or what and then go with it to the dh now in my primary school so what we would do is uh this in primary school the plates were always in the diet we used not to use forks of course we used to wash our hands before eating i tell you what so you have to carry your appetite or your gi in a cavera or a kapapula or what anything so go with it to the diet so yeah, when this person would finish putting their apeta or gi in their food be like i'm after your cavera so you would <laughs> you would <laughs> so this person would finish putting their stuff their petra in their f yeah so what you do after the other one has finished they give you the cavera you have to make sure you are the first so as this person is packing their petra in their cavera you're like you know i'm after your cavera you know what so that so that when they reach the dh after they've removed the the cavera the apeta from the cavera they give it to you directly so the loyalty would be that after she has removed she doesn't put the cavera in her soup you put the cavera in your soup now there would be another person after your cavera over you get then another person depending on how long that line is you know you guys oh my god our life in school was a harsh and you know i think about this and i'm like what now like that was not enough i like that was not enough so uh, if someone had like avocado or something you'd be like i'm after your peelings so what the <laughs> What they would do is they would not peel it like normally they'll just cut it through with like a fork or a spoon or whatever and then they just remove the content and they're done removing the content they like toss that thingy to you that was not even the worst part okay i don't think these are worst parts even so now in a situation like morning porridge or porridge or whatever by the way you guys it's now that i think about it we used to this is sad even it's sad i don't want to talk about it but yeah the cups you know how someone has like needle that you need actually those days it used to be needle on shea you know like the tin of needle the powdered milk basically so when they would put like uh, um that needle in their porridge you'd be like i'm after your cup so you'd sit there and wait for this person to finish taking their porridge i don't even know where we got that time from when they finish their porridge then they give you their cup then no tabula tabula muko <laughs> so that you also get to the feel of the needle in your porridge you guys we suffered we suffered but you see what's funny is that as a child it actually doesn't matter like that's the jail and the best part was uh in a situation where they would come to like visit you and then they bring you bread things those things eh? <laughs> you'd come and tell this person this is this person whom they visit you're like you know what you give me some bread give me some two slices when they visit me i'll pay you back that is how we rolled <laughs> so you guys I, I could go on and on and on and on because oh my god there's so many things to talk about but yeah i just wanted to bring you in a little on how how we grew up our life was hard you guys you see what's funny is that we were fine you see what's funny is that we we were okay we were fine like we were so used to this life and we were living happily you guys you guys i don't want to tell you so many other things about my life but <laughs> but yeah that's as much as uh, that's as much as i'm going to be letting you in or in my life in this video yeah if you want another part two of this video please let me know i will sketch for all those other stories that i can tell you thank you so much for watching this video till the very end we love you take care and stay safe bye Calm down. what's up everybody what Mm, no, no, no. What? Emma, what? <laughs> what? 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 Emma, you guys are distracting me. What? Chad makes you 